Right, so this video, um, we're just going to reverse the direction of what we went yes on the previous lesson we learned how to graph and now we're going to give you the graph and you're going to learn how to write the equation. So you can, in your objectives you can identify the parts of the parabola which is important for us to write the equation and then you can write the equation of a quadratic function in factored form. So take a look at this graph. From here we can gather this kind of information. We have our solutions. So our solutions remember are your, just your x-intercepts. So my two x-intercepts, where it crosses the x-axis, are at 1 and negative 3. The axis of symmetry, where it gets cut in half, which is right there, that happens that x equals negative 1. And remember, you have to have x equals, or I'll mark it wrong. We have the vertex, which is the highest or lowest point of the parabola. In this case, this is a maximum, because it opens down. That happens at negative 1, 4. And then you have your equations. Remember, we learned in the last video, factor form looks like this. That's a q. a equals x minus p and x minus q. And p and q were just your x-intercepts or your solutions or your zeros or your roots. So this would be 1, and then this would be minus a negative 3. So I can fill out the information here. We have a. And then we have x minus 1, so we don't need the plus there. And x, two negatives make it plus 3. Notice, this is very important, they're not the same number in there, they're the opposite. All right, because they are solutions. And to find the solutions, we have to do the opposite when we're solving. We've been working this for a while. You always do the opposite, so the same thing if you reverse it, we're going to do the opposite. So we know about two-thirds of this equation. We know the, the p and the q, the x minus p, x minus q. What we don't know is a. And to do a, for us to solve for it, and we're not going to actually solve this one, we're going to do four examples like that, we need to somehow get a isolated or by itself. Well, we have x and y. x and y are points. Well, on a parabola, there are many different points. We can use any of these points, except we cannot use the x-intercepts. Um, it just doesn't work out. You end up getting like zero as an answer, which you can't make sense because a can't be zero if it's a quadratic. So you have these three points. You could plug in any one in for x and y, and then all you're left with is an a, and then you just use your basic algebra to solve. This will make more sense in the next video when we actually go through a problem. So on here we have the roots. We need to figure out so the roots, remember, your x-intercepts. So on this one, we have negative 1, and we have 1, 2, and 3. All right, so we write our equation. This is a. It's x minus, or one solution is negative 1, so then I need plus 1. One solution is 3, so I need minus 3. So I need to solve for a. So I need to pick another point on my graph. So I have 3 right here. I can make any 3 points. I always like to work with the y-intercept. But if you picked this one, and if you already picked that one, you will get the same answer of a if your algebra is all correct. So I'm going to pick this point. This point is 0, 3. So in this point, you have an x and you have a y. So I'm going to replace or substitute in for x and y into here and solve. So y is 3 equals a. And substitute in 0 for x. So I have 0 plus 1 and 0 minus 3. Order operations, I have to do parentheses first. So I go 0 plus 1, which is 1. So I have a times 1. And then 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Right. So then I have 3 equals 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. You always write numbers in front of variables when it's just by itself. And then I just have to do simple division. And then solve for a, which is negative 1. Does this a make sense? And you kind of have to think to yourself, okay, if a is negative, remember when I learned about a's. My parabola opens down. Oh, this is negative. 
we're on the right track. All right, so we have y equals negative 1, x plus 1, x minus 3 as my equation. So all I did with this step is I took my a, just replace it in there, and then there's my equation, and I'm done. So these go a lot faster than grabbing. All right, so on B, find my two zeros, my two x-intercepts. I have one, and I have four. So it's A, X, oh, I don't know what happened there. This board has a minus zone today. So I have X minus one, X minus four, because this is positive, positive, so these need to be opposite to make one and four a solution. So I need to solve for A. I cannot use your x-intercepts. However, down here, I give you a point right here. I say, okay, use 2, negative 6. That's my other point. 2 is x. Negative 6 is y. So I go negative 6 equals A. 2 minus 1. 2 minus 4. It gives me negative 6. A. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. I get negative 6 goes negative 2. A, again, write the number in front. Although some students end up thinking that you're subtracting or adding. Just put it right out front because you're just multiplying here. And then you get A equals 3. And 3, oh, my parabola opens up and it's kind of skinny. So like, hmm, I'm pretty confident that is the correct answer. So Y equals... Just replace the a into my equation I have above, x minus 1, x minus 4. You're done. All right, so my x-intercepts here, looking, we have negative 2, and we have 3. So negative 2 and 3, so I have a, we have x, negative 2 is the solution, so positive 2. It goes into my equation. 3 is the solution, so then I have minus 3. All right, so I need another point. Again, I give you a nice point for you to work with. So we have x and y. Oops. board decided to quit on me. I'm telling you. It's possessed today, I think. All right, so we have 2 equals a. Negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 minus 3. A. All right, just doing my basic algebra, order operations, do parentheses first. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So A times 1. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So I get 2 equals 1 times negative 4 is negative 4A. Divide by negative 4. Simplify my fraction. 2 divided by negative 4 is negative 1 half. Negative makes sense. Yep, my parabola opens down. It's a little wider than normal, so that makes total sense. That could be my parabola, or that could be my a value. So just plug it in for my equation. All right, one last example. This is our situation where we only have one x-intercept or one solution. In this case, it is one. So when we have this with graphing, we have still our a. These two end up being the same. It is a solution twice. So it's positive one, so I need minus one. X is minus one. So if I want to, I can write this as x minus one squared, since these two are the same. A, all right. So I need another point, and I have two options here. I either can do 2, 2, or 0, 2. Again, I always like the y-intercept. I like working with 0. So my x and y value. So I have need that 2 equals a, 2 minus 1 squared. Order operations, I get 2 equals a. 2 minus 1 is 1 squared. 1 squared is 1, 1 times a is a, so a is 2. Makes sense, it's opening up. 
my final answer is y equals 2. I'm going to use this because it's proper. If they're the same, to write it like that. x minus 1 squared. There you go. All right. Let's just review. Um, the x-intercepts are the opposite. Make sure you change it. If you have 1 and 3, then it's negative 1 and negative 3. Just change the sign and do your equation. To solve for a, you need another point besides your solutions or your x-intercepts or your zeros or your roots. Any of those. Do not use those. Um, you're going to end up with 0 as a, which is impossible for you to be a quadratic if a is 0. So just use another point. It will work out just fine. And just use your algebra. And then really follow your order operations when you're solving. That's another mistake students make. Remember PEMDAS or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Reminder to do reflection so you get credit for watching this video.